What is up everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. And in today's video, I'm very excited because I'm actually going to be doing a quick and easy overview of Logic Pro 10. So as a musician and composer, I think it's really essential that we, you know, we understand our DAW to a degree that enables us to write and produce music without any hassles, you know? And that's not to say I never encounter any hassles in this program. I certainly do because I'm not like a super technical guy. I just, I, I want to be able to get in and start making music right away. And so in this video, I want to share with you like the most fundamental things I think you do need to know about this program in order to get you started running um, very quickly. And so I'll, I'll basic, basically be sharing three methods to um, to creating music in like less than five minutes. You know, if you know these, you'll get up and running right away. But before we do that, I want to share two things with you. Number one is my free guide, the composer's toolkit. This is something I've put together for the upcoming composer and aspiring arranger who's really looking forward to understanding what kind of tools and equipment one really needs to get started in the realm of virtual orchestration and composition. So I, I get this question a lot, like what tools you actually need to, um, you know, to actually get up and running really quickly. And so this is my answer. Like it, I, I talk about computers, I talk about software, I talk about some hardware and stuff, but it's all within a certain budget because a lot of us don't have that much money to spend. So this is for the, you know, the budget conscious composer who wants to get started right away with minimal fuss, with uh, a limited budget, this will be the, the guide for you. So it's totally free if you wanna click the link in, down in the description box. Um, I wanna give that to you as a gift for watching this video. And the second thing is I am finally launching my community called Chris's Composing Community. And this is something you guys have been asking for for a long time and I'm so excited and glad to finally get it out there. But this is basically a um, uh, an exclusive private community for the for the ambitious like composer, arranger, orchestrator who really wants to level up their skills on a consistent basis and continue learning with a group of like-minded individuals, musicians, composers, arrangers, you name it. Um, so this features like, like I said, a community where you can interact with people, share your questions, you know, share advice with each other, encouragement and support. Um, we'll, you'll also get fresh monthly masterclasses where we'll talk about specific topics in the music industry, whether that's like composing, orchestration, business, whatsoever. We'll cover it all there. And you'll also have access to me in like live Q&A calls, track feedback calls. A lot of you have been asking for track feedback. So this is the perfect time to get in that or get that as well. And uh, I highly encourage you to join if you are interested because the doors will actually close this Sunday, July 18th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so if this is, uh, you know, if you've ever wanted to be part of a, you know, a, a warm community of composers and musicians and really hold yourself accountable to creating and producing more music, this is the perfect opportunity to do so um, because the price will never be this affordable again and it will go up the next time I do open the doors. So I do wanna encourage you to check it out if this is something you are interested in. Uh, but without any further ado, I want to jump into Logic and show you kind of how it works, okay? So this is like the first page that you see when you jump into Logic. This is, um, by default, they kind of give you some options of tracks you can set up. Now, the ones I really worry about the most are either a software instrument track or an audio track. The main difference being software instrument, you can use MIDI, right? MIDI being like the blocks of like little data that import into the computer when you play something on your MIDI controller. The other uh, track I like to work with is audio. So audio, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's an audio file that you cannot alter through MIDI. You can't really change the notes in there, but you can, of course, pitch shift the entire track. So you're either working with software instrument tracks or instrument tracks, right, or audio tracks. In this case, let's start with a software instrument track. We will use it later. And you get a pretty clean interface, right? Um, you kind of get a library of built-in stock sounds that Logic gives you, and that's a big plus from this DAW, actually. A lot of DAWs don't have built-in sounds, so that's one thing I love about Logic. Here you'll see the inspector view, which gives you the specific details about whatever track is being highlighted at the moment. So you see here that you know we only have one instrument track, and so they tell us a little bit about the the uh, the track, right? So right now I haven't recorded anything, so there's no information kind of showing up here, but this is the track itself. You know, this is the MIDI channel, um, all this stuff you don't really have to worry about. This is kind of like the track volume itself through the fader. And then this is the master track um, through the stereo track. So if I click up here in the mixer, you can see this stereo out is created by default. When you have lots and lots of tracks, you know, when you're building like 30, 40 tracks in a song, 
everything will basically be outputted to this stereo out track, which you can consider like your master bus, okay? So you do wanna make sure that your uh, keyboard, your MIDI controller, or whatever speakers you're using are plugged in properly into your computer. Uh, Logic's really good because it kind of automatic, automatically detects it for you. And it asks you, do you wanna input this thing or do you wanna output uh, through this thing? So at the moment, you can see here through my input device, in my preferences, I have this built-in microphone, right? Um, but you have lots of options you can choose from. And if you plug in a microphone directly into the computer, it will automatically pick that up and give you that option to choose from if you wanna sing into Logic, for example. And output, I have Telestream Audio Capture because I'm recording this video right now. That's the audio player. So it's directing the sound out into um, the, the program. Okay, so let's dive right into the first way of making music. And in this method, you actually don't need any prior music theory knowledge. You just have to think to yourself what sounds good and you just trust your ears. So we, cl uh, we click on this icon, icon over here, which is like the loop browser, um, has a bunch of loops. And you can see here, there are many, many, many loops that will give you uh, a great starting point. So what we can do is let's let's just build a very basic beat here. So we'll start with like a shuffle drum set, let's see. Um, and then let's see what that sounds like. Now maybe I don't like that tempo. Maybe I think it's a little bit too fast. So maybe I'll slow down the BPM to let's say 100. So I'll drag that down. Now let's have a listen. So you can see how handy this is, right? So these loops will actually uh, adapt to your DAW's tempo, which is really nice. Um, a, a lot of audio files won't do that, right? They, they will actually uh, continue at the same tempo. And if you try to force it to slow down or speed up according to your DAW tempo, it will create some artifacts and it won't just, it just won't sound very nice, you know? So what we'll do is we'll maybe extend this a little bit. I'll, I'll just loop it by going to the upper right corner and just dragging across. So now you can see I basically have this looping for six bars. Let's add in another thing here. So let's say we have a rhythm section. Let's add in some piano. Maybe I want like, let's say electric piano six. So let's see how this sounds. Okay, let's repeat that one more time maybe. So. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's repeat that a couple more times, actually. We'll do the same with the drums. And I could just continue and looking through here and add more elements on top. But let's say, because we're writing in the key of C, the first sample I put in here for the piano, you see it's in the key of C. I'm just gonna drag this over here. So you can see they, they name all the keys here for these samples. Maybe we can choose another key that's in C. So we'll click key. So now it's organized by key. You see these have little dashes because those are not actually um, tonal. So we're gonna go down until we see some, uh, so we see some C's, here we go, right here. And let's see what these sound like. I'll, I'll take one of these gold disc synth layers and put pop, pop that in here. Here we go, let's see what that sounds like. All right, there's a bit of a clash there, right? Even though it's in C, the reason is because this is actually in C minor. So understanding the difference and hearing the difference between major and minor can be very useful. Maybe let's go for another one. Let's see what a hard grinding bass would sound like. Look, look how big this waveform is. It's probably pretty loud. Yeah, so I don't really like that one. I don't think it really fits. Maybe I'll go with uh, this hot fever, hot guitar thing. Let's see how that sounds like. Cool, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. That kind of works, actually. So let's extend that a little bit. The only thing is that you know, because this this piano loop kind of sounds happy. It's like in the key of C major. It it gives us that bit of a um, a clash with the C minor. So let's see what happens if we drag in this classic anthem music. See what that sounds like. Nice. Now we change the vibe completely. Right, and you can just continue this. And so this is a really cool way to just build a foundation 
uh, just using some loops. And again, you don't really need music theory knowledge for this. You just need to know where to access the loops, which is literally just right here. And then you can click and drag and you can also type in whatever you want. So let's say I want um, more piano, right? So I type that in. Now I have a whole piano list over here. And uh, now it's kind of, it's organized by, by, uh, by piano name. I click the key and then it gives me all the pianos organized by key. Right. And so you can continue to filter down from here if you like, and it's organized in a very simple way. So that's great. So that's kind of the first way to make music very quickly. Let's take out these instruments and let's get into the second method, which is actually just using logic stock instruments. So now you're getting into kind of multi sample territory where um, you're not using loops, but you're actually playing an instrument that um, that is uh, that, that can be played across the keyboard, for example. So if I play this grand piano plus pad. Right? Logic has some pretty interesting sounds. So let's uh, record something really quickly. So I kind of like that piano and pad sound. Now let's say I kind of wanted to slow that down at the very end. Uh, what I can do is you can see it's currently set at 100 beats per minute because I kind of altered that myself. You can also change the time signature here and the key signature as well. But let's say I don't really want the tempo to stay the same until the very end. So I can basically create two tempo points here just by clicking. And then I can drag the second point down so let's say I want it to go to about 70 right there. And now you see it's a very sudden drop in tempo, which we don't really want. It would sound like this. And now suddenly it's a lot slower. So what you want to do is you take this little uh, circle here and you drag it back. So now it has this nice even curve, you know, going down in tempo. So it should sound kind of like this. slows down a little bit, but especially at the very end, that chord really holds on, right? Because we've slowed out the tempo here. Okay, so let's say we, we kind of like that and they kind of split it out for us. We have just the pad and then we can do just the piano, which is also very nice, very convenient. Okay, so now let's say I want to add another instrument. So what I can do is go up to this plus sign over here, which I can add a new track. Now, because I'm doing MIDI, I'm working with MIDI, I can click software instrument track instead of an audio track click create, and then we have this new instrument track. So now you are, you can do anything you want with it. In this case, I'm putting on another instrument. So let's say I go to orchestral, I go to woodwinds and I hear a flute. Okay. Click on flute and it's kind of sounds like this. So let's just play a little light melody on top. Very cool. All right, finally, why don't we add uh, some strings to this? So uh, another way you can create the track is you literally click this over here, this icon, which duplicates the track. And so now you basically have another flute track. But what I wanna do is I want strings instead. So I'm gonna go here and click string ensemble. And now we should have that sound. So the, the module is all the way up here. You can hear the heavy vibrato. I'll just leave it down for now, okay? So let's add some chords, some harmony underneath this basic melody. Yeah, so I'm gonna start recording here. And the really easy way to do that is simply by pressing R. So that, that's the key switch. So there we go. I missed one chord over here. Going to piano roll. So that should have been an E minor chord after this one here. Just like that. Okay. I'm just going to not overlap the MIDI here. 
And there we go. Now we have basically three parts and you have a very short little piece. So this is the second way of doing it, is using your DAW's built-in stock instruments. And this is really the, this was the main attraction for me um, going into Logic from Ableton. I was like, wow, this is actually very interesting. You can actually create music from Logic without needing to buy external equipment, which is really cool. All right, so that's the second way using the stock stuff. You could tell it doesn't sound quite as professional as maybe like a, a live recording or something because these are more synthetic instruments. Um, so you're naturally gonna have less of a good sound compared to something that's been professionally, realistically recorded. That brings me to the final point and the final method of making music, and that is to use external software, external plugins, okay? So again, we start from scratch, we deleted those tracks, we start from a software instrument track, and now I don't need this library anymore because I'm not gonna use the stock instruments. So I'm gonna close it up, and I'm gonna go to the inspector window, go down to instrument, and now I have a bunch of instruments that I could use. I could use all of like Logic stock stuff. They have a bunch of programs that you can actually use and I haven't explored really any of it um, <laughs> because I tend to like to use Contact as my sampler of choice. So I go to AU Instruments. I go to Native Instruments because Native Instruments is the company that has created Contact. I go to Contact and I can go to 16 times stereo, which means it will create 16 separate outputs. So I can put 16 instruments at one time within one contact plugin. So it loads up, you can see here. Now in the inspector, win inspector window, we have contacts loaded up. So all you need to do is click it if you wanna bring it up. Now, um, so we, we, this is what we call a sampler, right? Because it basically holds all the, all the different uh, samples or sound recordings that these companies created, and it requires this, this software contact to run the, the technology, these libraries, we call them. So for example, if I wanna bring in a realistic piano, my favorite being Cine Piano, then I'm gonna open that up and bring that in. So now if I play something, Suddenly that sounds a lot more realistic because this is an actual Steinway Grand Piano recorded in a scoring stage, you know? So with Contact, with something like this, it really opens up a world of possibility. We open up the mixture window here and let's say we, we don't want just, uh, we don't just want one piano track, right? Let's say we want more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit this plus button a few times. Let's add up to 10 tracks. Now we have 10 auxiliary tracks. I'm gonna highlight them, right click and create a track so that it ends up creating these tracks on the arrange window. So now I can put individual instruments on those, um, on these tracks. So after you have your tracks loaded up, all you really need to do now is very similar to what we did with Logic stock stuff, is you go into your external libraries and you can load in your own instruments. So let's say I want a piano, but I also want strings. So first of all, I'm gonna label this one piano. I have to do this manually because uh, I've just created these tracks from scratch. And so uh, let's say I want a string patch, I can use violins, first violins, let's say. I just created two of them by accident there. And then let's say I also want uh, some brass. Let's see, maybe we can use cine brass. Now we'll use maybe a horn. So you see the, the instruments appear here as patches, different blocks, right? And those will naturally assign themselves to uh, the MIDI tracks in order. So the piano track, if I click on the first track, it'll create that track or it will activate that instrument. If I want the strings, I'm gonna type here strings and then I can play. You can create your own string lines like that just by clicking on that track. And then uh, let's say here I want that to be a horn. So I'm gonna type horn and then see what this one sounds like. See what I mean, right? So let's just say we wanna create something really quickly here. Maybe I'll start with the piano because I want that to be my bass. So that's my piano track done. And now let's say I wanna put in a violin line on top because I want there to be some sort of natural uh, sweeping melody on top, right? 
or maybe this is just the beginning of a piece, so I want there to be some sort of melodic line to carry it forward. So I know this is in D major that I've played it in. So I'm gonna make sure I start playing a melody in D major. Let's have a quick uh, try here, start recording. Now the reason those, this, the, uh, the notes were kind of cutting in and out there was because they're kind of still loading here, as you can see in the patch. Um, the white bar is not all the way at the end yet. Um, and it's also a case of you know using a lot of CPU resources. I'm just gonna tweak the melody here a little bit. I kind of forgot my chord progression, so that's why it sounded a little dissonant. So that should be an A, and this can be a G here. that. Okay, so let's have a quick listen. And at the same time, I was basically trying to bring in some expression and fiddle with the volume a little bit at the same time. So you'll notice here that we have this kind of data right here, what, like what's going on with that. We actually call that modulation. So with this library in particular, Cinematic Studio Strings, they really respond well to the different dynamics and the recorded um, sound, right? The different recorded dynamics. So when you write up the wheel, the mod wheel, it not only triggers between loud and soft, but it also goes between soft playing and louder playing. And so, yeah, the, the, the lower the line is, basically the softer the, the sound is. So that's really important for string writing if you're curious about that. And then finally, maybe, let's put in a little horn. Maybe because the horn has a lower register than the violins, we will uh, put in a line that's a little bit um, lower as well. Let's have a listen here. So we'll click on the horn track. Here we go. All right, that sounds pretty decent to me, you know? So basically we have some melody going on. We all, we've also got some harmony going on. Right, and again, you see I wrote the mod wheel here because I wanted some expression in there. And as the line goes up, so does the modulation and it kind of goes back down at the very end. So the sound can taper off very naturally. Now forgive me because like the, the, the information looks really like like very zigzaggy here. And that's only because my mod wheel is a little bit wonky. Uh, whenever I move it slightly, it just kind of goes, it spazzes out with the data. So, but don't really worry about that. When you do it, you should see something very, very smooth, kind of like, um, kind of like that, you know? So worst comes to worst, if it, if it's super unpredictable, when you use your wheel, you can literally just draw it in yourself and that will do the job for you. But you can see already the result here using these three tracks sounds a lot better than what I did with uh, Logic Stock Sounds because these are literally dedicated libraries meant for this type of music. Um, you know, you, you purchase these separately. So these are external third-party developer plugins and libraries, and uh, they can be on the expensive side, but they can also be more affordable. It really depends on what you're going for and the style of music that you're writing. So for orchestral music, you know, there's a lot of different companies, a lot of people and com uh, developers put out these really, really great products. So for me personally, I love to use Cinematic Studio Strings. I think that's a great string library for romantic writing. Uh, for woodwinds, I love uh, Berlin Woodwinds from Orchestral Tools. It is on the pricier side. So um, Cinematic Studio Woodwinds is a another great option from the same company. They also have a brass library, but for brass, I love using Cinebrass from Cinesamples. Percussion wise, I like to use Cineperk from Cinesamples as well. And uh, and yeah, it, it gives me like the most realistic sound and I can really control the finger of uh, the, uh, sorry, the instruments under my fingertips as much as I want. Um, having that flexibility is always really nice when you're creating music. So those are just, you know, three ways to create uh, music very quickly. And you can see it wasn't very technically challenging. All I did was load up logic. The first method was, you know, I opened up the loops. 
I organized it by key, right? Once I dragged in a couple of loops, I kind of see how it sounds together. The minor was kind of clashing with the major, so you can simply discard and try another loop, right? And th that's the process. You don't really need music theory for this. You can just try it until you like it, or you can use it as a foundation for a bigger song to, that develops later on if you want to. Then the second method was loading an instrument tracks, right? And going into Logic's stock sounds and building from there, which are also, uh, which is another great option if you don't have a lot of external libraries and you're just trying to create your own demos. They don't have to be like the super top of the line professional sound, right? But the final way, and I the, the way I do it every single day, is by loading in an external plugin. So in this case, using Logic, uh, sorry, using Contact, uh, which is a third party plugin, is a sampler, and a lot of orchestral. Uh, developers use contact as the sampler of choice. So if you want to go into orchestral composition, I would highly recommend checking out contact because um, I, I don't really know how to use contacts features in itself, like the detuning, the, the envelope shifting and all of that stuff. It's just way over my head, but the fact that it can host all these different instruments and it sounds so good, all the libraries, um, it makes it very, very worth it for me, you know? So you kind of have to decide where you are in your journey and what kind of music you want to make. But ultimately, those are the three, the uh, you know, the three ways of making music that I personally recommend, whether you're a beginner or a more advanced musician, you're probably going to fall into one of these categories. Um, it also depends on like your own situation of financial, right, stuff, like how how much money you have to invest in tools and all that. This third method is is definitely the most expensive because you're literally investing in uh, equipment outside of what Logic gives you, right? But Logic can already get you up and running in a very cool way just with those first two methods. So that's kind of like my quick and easy version of um, a, a Logic overview, just to show you how easily you can get started uh, making music. I hope that helps you in any way. I, a quick reminder that Chris's Composing community is now open again until Sunday, the 18th of July. Um, before the doors close, you should definitely join if you are interested in um, joining a community of like-minded musicians and composers, all hoping to build up each other and uh, improve their skills, take them to the next level. And just remember, you also have uh, monthly calls with me, like Q&A calls and track feedback calls. And also you have monthly master classes that literally cover specific um, topics in music, right? So it's all, it's all a community based. It's all really warm and inviting. So if that's something you're interested in, I definitely recommend you check it out. And before you go, I do want to give you my composer's toolkit guide. Once again, it's totally free. If you want to check it out, um, it will basically get you set up on what you need to get started. The most important tools that you absolutely need that are vital to producing virtual orchestral music on the computer. This is what I would recommend. So thank you so much again. I hope to see you in the next video and uh, take care, my friends. Bye-bye.